प्रैक्टिकल इंडक्टर रेस्पॉन्स with DC excitation, transient response of RC circuit with DC excitation, transient response of RLC circuit with DC excitation, the examples. So, what is a transient? Now, if the circuit consists the R, L, and C, that is the resistor, inductor, and capacitor, and uh, supply voltage is connected at transient, then the current will flow through the circuit in some equation now due to sudden change or application of voltage and current the response of the circuit will change from the previous one and that is known as the transient condition now we have considered till now that dc resistive network in which the voltage and current were independent on time Because the relation was V is equal to I into R. Now, two passive elements, that is inductor and the capacitor, are introduced in the DC network, and the voltage and current relationship for these two elements will be like this: V L, that is the drop across the inductor, that is equal to L dI dt, and across the capacitor it becomes one by C integration I dt plus V C. At, this is at the zero to zero condition. Now we can apply KCL, KVL, mass analysis, current analysis, voltage, node voltage, all the methods and all network theorems. But the result in differential equations rather than the algebraic equation we have considered in the resistive network. Now the transient current or voltage that means that is a very quickly changing. This will occur always for a short period of time after the switching moments, and after the transient has ended, the current and voltage returns to a steady state condition. Now, from this graph, we can see after the switching or after the application or changing in the voltage or current, the response uh, is very much changing up to this region. And this region is known as the transient response. And after this, the response becomes stable, and it is known as the steady state response. Now, the overall response is two types. One is transient response, and another is steady state response. And summation of these two gives us the overall response. And the time taken for the circuit to to change from The transient response to steady state response is known as the transient time. So now uh, consider the practical inductor and the ideal inductor. So this one is the ideal inductor. So in ideal inductor, we are considering that V S is the constant voltage source, and P e is equal to zero. The switch is closed. And we are assuming that the initial current through the conductor is zero. So hence, I zero is equal to zero. Now, uh, in a ideal conductor, uh, we know V is equal to L into dI/dt. 
Now the current through a linear inductor must be continuous and the voltage across the inductor is not proportional to the current flowing through it but the rate of change of the current with respect to time. Now when the current is constant the VL becomes zero or VL becomes zero. Uh, VL is the drop across the inductor and the drop across the inductor it is zero. So under the steady state condition and the DC current uh, inductor acts as a short circuit. So here the relation of I becomes integration of PS by L dt because the term I0 becomes 0 as it is equal to Vs by, Vs by L into T because after this integration it becomes Vs by T. Now consider the practical inductor and in practical inductor there are some um, resistance of the inductor coil has to be considered and the total resistance of the circuit becomes R1 plus RL. And if we consider R1 plus RL is equal to R, then we can find out the equation Vs minus R into IT minus L D I D T equal to 0. Or Vs by L, dividing both sides by this L equal to R by L into IT plus L D I D T. So we can compare it with the equation K equal to Px plus Dx dt and general solution of this equation is given as e to the power minus Pt. 0 to 3k e to the power pt dt plus 3 into e to the power minus pt. So comparing this equation with equation 5 we can find out the current equation that is e to the power minus r by l into t integration 0 to t vs by m into e to the power r by l t plus c into e to the power minus r by l into t. So um, this is the RL circuit with DC excitation is given here and voltage source is constant which is closed at T is equal to 0. So if we apply KVL in this circuit then we are getting that G minus RIT minus LDIT equal to 0 or divide both sides by L we are getting V by L equal to R by LIT plus LDIT. So as we know that the general solution of this type of equation is e to the power minus pt into integration of 0 to t k e to the power pt dt plus constant into e to the power minus pt. So we can compare this equation with the equation number 9 and we can find out that the solution it is given as e, into e to the power minus r by lt integration 0 to t p by l e to the power r by l into t plus constant into e to the power minus r by l into t. Now uh, the i becomes v by r plus c into e to the power minus r by l into t. Now just before the switching the inductor current is equal to 0 and the inductor proper according to inductor property it does not allow the sudden change in the current so that at t is equal to 0, the it is also 0. So from this equation we can say this it becomes 0 that is equal to v by r t to the power minus r by l into t or equating this we can find out the value of this constant that is equal to minus v by r. So we can put this value of c into the equation 8 that is it is equal to v by r minus v by r e to the power minus r by l into t or v by r into 1 minus e to the power minus r by l into t. Now this v by r is the steady part and this v by r e to the power minus r by l into t that is the transient part. So the overall equation is 1 minus exponential. Uh, so it becomes an exponential increasing function and this is the current profile. So if we plot the value of current with respect to t then we can see that it will increase exponentially and after certain time it will go to a steady state value that is equal to v divided by r. Now if we consider the final value is v divided by r then we need to find out what is the time constant. So the equation is e to the power minus uh, v into 1 by 
d by r into 1 minus d to the power minus r by e into t. Now, if we consider that t is equal to L by r, then the equation becomes d by r into 1 minus d to the power minus 1 and this is equal to 0 0.632 into v divided by r and v divided by r that means the i steady that is the current at steady state. So, this t is equal to L by r time is required to reach the 63.2 because if we multiply it by 100 then it becomes 63.2. So, the time required to reach the 63.2 percent of the steady state value is known as the time constant and the ratio of 1 by tau is known as the damping ratio and that is equal to r by L. So, next we need to find out the voltage across the resistor that becomes dr that is equal to i into r. So, putting the values we can find out 1 minus e to the power minus r by l into t. So, it is also in exponentially increasing function and after some time it will go to its final value and it will same at steady state it will its value will be the total applied voltage here. Now, the voltage across the inductor that is equal to Vm and that is equal to L di dt. So, if we put the value of i in this equation, then we can find out that is equal to V into the power minus r by L into t, which is actually a exponentially decaying function. So, from the final value V, it starts to decay. So, the Vm curve goes like this way. So, this curve represents the VR versus VL profile. And next one is the RL discharging circuit. So, in the previous case, we have considered that switch is connected to A and voltage supply is applied to the R and L in series connection. Now, in this, um, in this circuit, we are considering that the circuit reaches the steady state and after reaching the steady state, suddenly the voltage is withdrawn by opening the switch and throwing it to the B. So, from this equation, now consider this loop and here there is no voltage. So, we can write down the voltage KVL equation like this 0 equal to RIG plus LDIDT. Now, uh, this type of homogeneous equation, um, the solution of this equation becomes C into e to the power minus Q by T into T which gives i t equal to c dash into e to the power minus r by l into t. Now, at t is equal to 0 plus, the inductor will keep the steady state current even the switch is in position b because the inductor acts as a short circuit. So, we are putting the value that is um, c dash into e to the power minus r by l into 0 because c becomes 0 that is equal to v by r or we can find out the value of c is equal to d divided by r. So, if we put the value C equal to V divided by R, then we can find out the equation of I T like this C by R e to the power minus R by A into T, which is actually decaying signal. So, this is the current profile of the discharging circuit. Next, we need to consider the transient response of RC circuit. So, here the resistor and capacitor is connected in switch and switch is closed at T is equal to 0 position and supply voltage V is connected across this RC circuit. Now, the total voltage V equal to R into I plus 1 by C I D T or we can say I by C if we differentiate both sides then becomes I by C plus R into D I D T is equal to 0. Again, we are considering the general solution of this homogeneous equations is equal to e to the power c into e to the power minus q by into t and comparing this equation with this current equation, we can say that i equal to c into e to the power minus 1 by r c into t. Then the switch is closed at t is equal to 0 and the capacitor does not allow the sudden changes in the voltage. So, it acts as a short circuit and t is equal to 0 plus g equal to uh, i equal to v divided by r and i becomes then d by r into e to the power minus 1 by r c into t. So, it is exponentially decaying function and the, the capacitor is getting charged and charging current that will dies out and the voltage drop across the resistor becomes v into r that is i into r 
that is also an exponentially decaying function and the drop across the capacitor that is 1 by c integration of i t d t if you put the values then becomes v into 1 minus v power minus t by r c which is exponentially rising function. So, in this graph we can see that the v t that is the drop across capacitor will start from 0 and then it goes to the final value at the steady state value and the drop across the resistance starts to decrease like exponentially and the time constant in this case becomes RC. So, in the RC series circuit the time constant is RC. Now, the switch has uh, considered in position 1 and it reaches to the steady state and after steady state reaches the switch goes to the position 2 in the same way and the voltage source has been withdrawn. So, if we apply KVL in this circuit then we can see that 0 equal to RIT plus 1 by C IT DT. Now, if we differentiate both sides then equation becomes I by C plus RDIT equal to 0. Now, the general solution of this equation is same as C into e to the power minus Q by into T and according to that the current is become C into e to the power minus 1 by RC into T. Now, the T is equal to 0 plus the voltage across the capacitor will start discharging current through the R in the opposite direction of the I discharging. Uh, actual current was in this direction clockwise direction I but now the discharging current will start to flow in the opposite direction of the I that is the, or in the anti-clockwise direction. So, I0 is equal to minus V divided by R and if we put that, so I becomes minus V by R e to the power minus 1 by R into T. So, the voltage across the resistor VR that is minus V e to the power minus T divided by R C that means it is a uh, this type of current decay in transient response and the voltage across the capacitor uh, Vc becomes V into e to the power minus T divided by Rc. So, so, this becomes the capacitor voltage across capacitor and this becomes the voltage across the resistor. Next, the both the inductor and capacitor are connected across the series with this resistance and whole are connected to the supply voltage and T is again closed at t equal to 0, the switch is closed. So, if we apply the KVL then the equation becomes t equal to RIT plus LDIDT plus 1 by C IDT. Now, differentiating both sides we get the RDIDT plus LD square IDT square plus I by C is equal to 0. So, the characteristic equation can be written as t square plus R by L into P plus 1 by LC where P is the DDT that means the time derivative. So, if we consider this characteristic equation then by putting this with the Hathaja's formula we can find out the root that is minus B plus minus root over B square minus 4 AC by 2A that becomes R minus R by 2L plus minus root over R by 2L square minus 1 by LC. Now, we are considering that the P1 is alpha plus beta and P2 is equal to alpha minus beta whereas alpha is the damping factor and the total current is the summation of the steady state and the transient that means the, it gives two equations P1 e to the power P1 T plus P2 e to the power P2 T. Now, the steady state equation gives from the particular integral and the transient response is obtained from the complementary function. So, there are three cases may be possible from this equation. Uh, first consider R by 2 L whole square is much greater than 1 by L C. So, in this case the root um, P 1 and P 2 becomes alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta where beta is positive real that means the poles are the real and unequal. So, the I becomes e to the power A T into C 1 e to the power B T plus C 2 into e to the power minus B T and the current response is the over jam. So, in this case the overdamped response is this one and next we are considering R by 12 whole square is less than 1 by LC and that means the uh, poles are um, A plus J beta into A minus J beta and beta is the imaginary poles that means P1 and P2 actually are complex conjugate poles. 
So we are putting the values and that is equal to the power HP into C1 is to power JBT into it to power minus JBT that can be written as in form of cos beta t substitute into sin beta t. So the current response is undamped or underdamped or the oscillatory that means this one. So it becomes underdamped and it becomes also oscillatory. And finally when RL is by 2L whole square equal to 1 by LC that means the poles are real and equal then beta part becomes 0 and the current response is k1 e to the power alpha t uh, plus c2 e to the power alpha t the response is typically damped. So this is the overall current response for all the cases that is over damped, under damped and the critically damped. So according to the k variation of cases first we need to find out the pole locations and according to that the response will be varied in case of this RLC series type. So let us take another example. Uh, the time by a capacitor of one microfarad in series with one mega ohm resistance is to be charged up to 80 percent of its final value. So we need to find out the time. The time constant is given as RC. So multiplying this capacitor value C, one microfarad into one mega ohm by the value of R it gives the one second. Now the from equation we can find out the for charging of capacitor Q equal to capital Q into 1 minus e to the power 1 by RC into T and it is 80 percent of its value so it becomes 0 0.8 capital Q equal to small q or we can compare this equation with this so we give the equation uh, get the equation 0 0.8 equal to 1 minus e to the power minus T which gives the value T is equal to 1.6 second and in another example consider uh, find the current in a series having R equal to 2 ohm and L is given 10 Henry when the DC voltage 100 volt is applied we need to find out the current after 5 seconds of switching on. Now for the RL series circuit the time constant is L by R so it becomes 5 seconds and I equation of I equal to I into 1 minus e to the power minus T divided by 5 and I is known as the steady state current. Steady state current means V divided by R, V is given as 100 voltage and R is 2 ohm so V by R equal to 50 ampere. So we are putting the value of steady state current here so I becomes 50 into 1 minus e to the power minus T by 5 and I transient is uh, 50 into e to the power minus T by 5 and the steady state current is only 50 ampere and after 5 seconds T is equal to 5 so we are putting the value of T equal to 5 over here and it becomes the minus 18.51 ampere. So it is actually flowing in the opposite direction of the current I. So the current after 5 seconds is the difference between the total 50 ampere that is the steady state current and the after 5 seconds that is minus 18.51 that becomes the 31.42 ampere. Let us take another example. Uh, here the switch is kept at position 1 and steady state condition is reached at t is equal to 0 second it is moved to the position 2. We need to find out the current in both cases. So at position 1 uh, in the steady state current is flowing through and the steady state current is 100 divided by the overall resistance that is 10 plus 20 because these two are in series. So it gives the current 3.33 ampere and at t is equal to 0 position the RL circuit starts decaying and this time current is equal to the steady state current is e to the power minus 1 by R by L into T. So it becomes 3.33 into e to the power minus 40. So next let us take an example in a series RLC circuit is considered here. R L and C value is given and DC voltage 20 volt is applied. We need to find out the current free. Now for the series RLC circuit equation uh, voltage equation becomes R D I D T plus L D square I D T square plus I by C equal to 0 and from this equation we have learned the characteristic equation becomes this P square plus R by L into T plus 1 by L C equal to 0 and putting the values of R L C given over here we are getting that T1 and T2 is minus 0.21 and minus 4.71. So the I equation is the C1 e to the power minus 0.21 T T plus C2 into e to the power minus 4.79 T. Now the current in the um, inductor and the voltage in the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So we are considering that at T is equal to 0, V equal to LDIDT or DIDT is equal to 
g divided by l g is given here 20 and l is 100 so the rate of change of current is 20 ampere per second and at t is equal to 0 uh, plus i is also 0 so comparing this we can find out that uh, c1 into the power minus 21 into 0 that means um, it, it, as t is equal to 0 it becomes 0 e to the power 0 minus 0 that becomes 1 so it's actually equal to c1 plus c2 so differentiating this equation at uh, i equal to this one we are getting that t equal to 0 plus c1 equal to 4.37 and c2 is equal to minus 4.37 because c1 plus c2 becomes 0 so the overall current i t is 4.37 e to the power minus 0.21 t so minus 4.37 into e to the power minus 4.79 so in this way we can find out the solution of this RLRC and RLC circuit with the DC excitation. So these are the references. Thank you. Hope after this video lecture you have a clear idea about today's topic. Now we will go through some questions and sessions in the context of this video lecture. Now you are requested to go through gradually and try to solve the MCQ questions by your own. Answers are also attached at the end of the each question.